I had the good fortune to visit the North Carolina State Archives on a recent trip in the fall of 2021, depending on when you are watching this, uh, it was still during the pandemic, so some of the interviews were still wearing the face mask. Now, uh, I got to interview Sarah Kuntz, who is the state archivist for the state of North Carolina, and it was really cool. She uh, kind of took me on a behind the scenes tour and gave me a tour of the research room, as well as we sat down in her office and talked about what is available for genealogists uh, they're at the North Carolina State Archives. So I'm going to kind of go through all of that with you. Um, hey, but if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I'm also putting chapter markers in the video so that you can jump around. So we've got the interview, we've got the behind the scenes tour, and we've got the research room. There's a little bit of information for genealogists all the way through this, so, you know, it just kind of depends on what you want to see. So, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's start with you. I, okay. I understand you've been in this position for a few years now. Been here a while, yes. I've been in this position since 2012. And, and been actually with the archives since I started as a student in 1991. So I've been Good here for a while. you. You should be proud. I love it here. Yes. Can't complain. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Mm hmm. Um, so tell us all what you oversee with the state archives. There are three locations, right? right? Three locations, And you're correct. in charge of those as well? Correct. So, so tell us about those locations. Okay, so the state archives is the umbrella term, or as you said, those three locations. Mm -hmm. The main location is in Raleigh. That's probably of most interest genealogically because we centralize our archival county and state records here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is our original location. We have two satellite offices on either end of the state. The um, Outer Banks History Center is in Manio, and the Western Regional Archives is in Asheville. They focus on documenting the history and culture of their regions. So they're collecting a lot of those special collections, private materials, organizational records that document the history and culture of those parts of the state. Um, we also do that same here um, in terms of collecting private materials, and that can be anything from photographs, military records of North Carolinians, um, organizational records, private collections that are donated, um, as well as our state agency and county records that we collect. So uh, the Manio, that's the one if, mm -hmm. near the uh, coast. Correct. And then we've got the Asheville, uh, which is mostly handling the mountain region? The mountain area, yeah. That's actually in a really great facility. It's um, near the... Um, VA center there in a restored nurses dorm, so it's a historic property in and of itself, and it's a it's a beautiful facility, and that actually houses um, a western office for our entire department. So you will find branches of a lot of our department's operations in that same building. Now, are the now I know the Raleigh facility is open now for mm -hmm. research. Um, what about those other locations? We're are all they open. open? Oh, yep, we are oh, all fantastic. open to the public, and starting next month. Um, we will be open, we'll go back to Tuesday through Saturday hours, so we have some weekend hours for those that can't come in during the week. For people who, like, have never been to the archives mm -hmm. here and they haven't a clue, and, you know, I, I, full disclosure, have only been here a handful of times mm -hmm. myself, explain to everybody that there is a difference between the state archives and the library? Right. So that's a good place to start. So we are in the same building, mm -hmm. and that's really nice that you, people often go back and forth. So when you check into the building, you can you know often run back and forth to the two floors. We are going to have in the state archives 
um, original materials, that's what we specialize in, and only from North Carolina. So those are going to be original documents. Mm -hmm. um, the State Library has a lot of printed resources. They're going to have a lot of um, books and research files from genealogies that have already been completed um, on historical topics. They have copies of records from other um, states as well, so like, for example, census records, things like that. So sometimes if you are wanting to kind of jump around to neighboring states, you know, hop on down to the state library, check their printed resources, check their resources from other states. Okay, and so just to tell everybody, the mm -hmm. state library is kind of on that entry level right. when you first come in, mm -hmm. and that the archives here in Raleigh are one floor up. Right. So I want to think that there are some death records here. Right. So we have the vital records, the archival um, death records, get transferred to us on a regular basis. You can also find those in your county register of deeds or health department, as well as at the State Office of Vital Records and DHHS. Um, they maintain the birth certificates. They have not transferred any of those to us. So, they who? Uh, department of Health and Human Services okay. through the Vital Records Office or you could go to your county register of deeds for a birth certificate. Okay. Um, those are not a record that, that um, actually have been transferred here yet, so that's a good thing to point out. We often get asked about birth records. We do not have those here. Okay. Marriage records? Marriage records, yes, you can find those here. Um, so in North Carolina, prior to 1868, you did not have to have a license to get married. So you could get a marriage bond, which is sort of signaling your intent to get married. Mm -hmm. um, you could announce your intent to get married in church or publish it in the paper. Mm -hmm. um, marriage bonds that survive from that time period, we have them here. Um, do be aware they don't often give the same level of detail that marriage licenses do now. Right. Post-1868, um, we have the m copies of the marriage license or marriage registers, and you can usually find some of the copies of those in the counties as well. I'm often telling people that marriage bonds, though, even though they don't have a lot of information, mm -hmm. look to the witnesses or yes. the bondsmen because a lot of times yes. those are family members. If you were to guess, who are the primary people that come to visit the archives? Who are they? Our genealogists are our biggest client uh, base by far. Um, so we love our genealogists. We love to see our regulars. <laughs> we, do, we do the same thought when we see you coming in. Um, so, yeah, that's our biggest group of visitors on a regular basis Fantastic. Um, and then probably followed closely by historians, uh -huh. um, professors, community college professors, their students, undergrads, sometimes high school students doing original research, um, students for National History Day, folks like that coming in. And then we do um, a fair amount of business with the legal community when they're doing deep dives into some topic that they want to research. So those are our three biggest groups that come in. We're starting to see a little bit more with school groups, which is kind of fun. They might come in and do a little lesson with us and then take a tour, talk a little bit about what the archives do. So that's, hope to get back to that after COVID has passed. Well, let's talk about records. Sure. So we talked briefly about uh, vital records mm -hmm. and uh, that you have some of the death records, you have some of the marriage bonds and some of the marriage mm -hmm. records. You do not have the birth records. Right. What other record sets that are unique to the state archives here that um, a genealogist might be interested in? Okay, so to cover some of that time period before you get to the vital records law in North Carolina, which was 1913, before they had to start keeping vital mm -hmm. records, um, we do and have collected over the years copies of genealogical pages from Bibles. So that's a good place to look. Those are available here and online. And that's a, a source where you can look by family name to see if, if we have one of those. Um, and then in terms of other records, um, we really here in Raleigh are the central repository for those archival county records that are coming in. We're collecting the same things from every county, and those are going to be things that have often high value to genealogists. So that would include wills, estates, tax records. We've got bonds. For, so like say you might have an apprentice bond in your family past. Mm -hmm. um, um, bastardy bonds are often interesting to find family members as well, which is an early way of saying child support, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And then a lot of archival court records, so civil and criminal actions. Um, and then we tend to collect things um, that are of value, especially if we can just find any of them that survive. School, early school records um, from a county, 
uh, things like that are all important. Um, divorces, we do have some divorce records that have been transferred to us. I know one of my favorite things are maps. Oh yeah. And I'm assuming that you guys have a pretty good collection of maps. We do have a good collection of maps. Are all of those digitized? Uh, the vast majority of them are. And what we did several years ago in partnership with UNC Chapel Hill was especially for the county maps. We went through our collections, their collections, and those at the Outer Banks History Center and digitize them, and then, but if we had the same copy of a map, who has the best copy? So um, NC Maps um, Online is a great resource, but then it should tell you when you look at that map if that original is here or in Chapel Hill. You're always welcome to look at the original. How much of, of what we have here at the State Archives is available online for those who are researching from home? Well, that's actually a very good question and very common. Um, I don't know a percentage, but it's going to be a small percentage. And I will qualify that by saying that's on our website. You can also find our materials on other websites as well. But what we do with our digitization here is it tends to be what I would call curated. And by that I mean um, I have four facilities in Raleigh full of records. So our best guess is probably somewhere around maybe 200,000 cubic foot boxes. If, each, if those boxes contains 1,500 sheets of paper, you can see where this goes in mm -hmm. terms of how much we have. So we can't put that all online. Okay. So what we tend to do is pick things that are going to be of really high historical or genealogical value. And um, then we also look around and see, as Ancestry and Family Search have both digitized a lot of our materials. And so, you know, we're not going to try to duplicate what they're doing. We feel like they're a partner, you know, not, mm -hmm. uh, not a rival. Um, they're our partners. So... We're going to look for things that um, are pieces of a collection, highlights of a collection, or we're going to take something and we're going to tackle it. And we're going to keep adding to the digitization of it. Um, so a good example for that might be we started many years ago digitizing the governor's letter books. We started with the first one we had, and we're kind of marching our way through the governor's mm -hmm. and adding to that gradually. Um, we also tend to digitize around topics. Um, if you look at our digital collections, which I should add, um, our digital collections are done in conjunction with the state library. So that's a nice, you don't, you don't need to know behind the scenes what shelf they're on. You just want to know I'm looking for something and, and you've got it here in the department. Right. So we organize those kind of by subject. Um, we have, for example, um, been adding to our African-American education collection from the Department of Public Instruction materials. Um, and we add selections of that because we have hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of cubic feet of material. So we're kind of pick the highlights of things. Um, trying to think what we've got on deck. Really what's coming up in the next few years is going to be a heavy emphasis on things related to um, the Revolutionary War as we're getting Beautiful. close to the 250th. Wonderful. I'm, I'm very excited the last few years we've gotten into an online transcription site um, that we call Transcribe NC. I it, was going to ask about that. Okay. It's from a platform called From the Page that a lot of archives and a lot of other state archives use. Let's talk briefly, okay. real quick, about that because the viewers at home might not have okay. a clue as to what we're talking about. Okay. So what is it? Okay. So digital collections, if you go look at something that we've digitized, what you're going to see is a uh -huh. digital image of that material. Right. Like, let's say we digitized an old will from our earliest wills in North Carolina, which were housed in the Secretary of State's office. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see an image of it. You might see a little bit of metadata, which is basically mm -hmm. like a description mm -hmm. that would lead you to, if you came in and said, I want to see this will, it's going to tell you a little bit about where it's stored. Okay. All right. That's not going to get a keyword search because that's a manuscript copy and mm -hmm. it's not, there's not full text searchability. Okay. If we were to take that manuscript document and that image and put it on transcribe and see, that opens it up for volunteers to go in and transcribe the document. When that document is fully transcribed, we pull that data off transcribe and see and add it to the information about the digitized image. So when you go to that digital collection in the future and you search for Sarah Kuntz, if this document has been fully transcribed, you're going to get a hit on that word. So it gives an added layer of accessibility. We're focusing on things yeah. like lately. So I'm mm -hmm. going to, we're, we've done a lot of colonial court records are just finishing up being digitized. Um, we've done a lot of World War I and World War II diaries and other materials. So um, if those aren't transcribed, so let's take the court records, uh -huh. for example. 
if those aren't transcribed, then we can't really search them by all the people, the names that might be in there. But if the right. if they're people that are doing the yeah. metadata, are they pulling names out of those no, documents? No, no, no. Um, if you look just at the digital mm -hmm. image, what she would see is it'd be like you'd flip through it like you would the book. The, uh, the mm -hmm. benefit of the digital collection. <laughs> you got to sit and read it. Yeah. You got to sit and read it. Okay. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do transcribe things and publish them. Mm -hmm. um, those are great resources, especially for court records. What is here that's not online? And I mean, we've yeah, kind of been hitting lot, some of that, lot, and there's yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody is getting ready to uh, come here, what's your advice to them? Clearly do your homework ahead of time, but how do they do that homework? They get on the card catalog? What do they do? Yes, we have an online catalog that is called DOC. They can look on there and get a sense. So in DOC, what you're going to get a sense is our general scope of our holdings. So mm -hmm. do you have, you know, court records from this county? Mm -hmm. um, the digital collections are kind of a separate resource. That's where you're going to find things that are digitized. Um, but again, don't assume that everything is online. I mean, a lot of stuff is digitized, but it's mm -hmm. certainly not um, exclusive. Or maybe you've seen something on Ancestry or mm -hmm. Family Search, and you say, well, I really want to see that, that will. I want mm -hmm. to hold the original. I love digital images. There's nothing like holding that original document, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think a good piece of homework would be if you find something in the catalog or in the digital collections, you know, jot some notes down about what it says, like, oh, this is from this county, or, and this is the date. Um, you know, things that will help us get to that original material when you get here. Um, but I think just in terms of general preparation, mm -hmm. if you're going to come here, mm -hmm. um, we do have an email address where you're welcome to send in questions to us. That's archives at ncdcr.gov. Um, it's always good to call ahead and say, you know, what are your latest hours, especially in the pandemic? You know, it's good mm -hmm. to check to see what our hours are because um, we have changed that some over the last year. And then, um, you know, kind of gather your thoughts about what you're interested in looking at or what you've found so far. But we do not expect people to come in here and be experts or be ready to roll or be self-sufficient. We have archivists on staff. That is their job, to listen to what you've done, listen to what you're looking for, point you towards what records might be of use. You know, so you might want to say, I've looked at these things online. I'm still missing this piece or I'm still looking for this uh, relative. And, tell them a little bit about where, you, where you've been looking and what you've looked at, and they can help you, like, kind of point you where you need to go and explain um, what other records might be here that would not be digitized, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about uh, Civil War records. Okay. Uh, what do you have? Are, is it microfilm, microfish? Is it original documents? What's... Um, we're going to have originals and copies. So uh, mm. some of the originals that we have here that are um, highly used would include the um, pension series. We have two state pension series for veterans. Those are often a good resource mm -hmm. for telling you about that um, individual and his service because they had to detail that in their application. Um, so those are heavily used. Um, another good resource that our department has created uh, and we have copies of it here, is the Civil War roster series. Now, that's a, these are Confederate series here, mm -hmm. but um, they have done a lot of the background work for you where mm -hmm. they've gone through all these other published and um, original sources and created unit descriptions about what battles they were in and their officers and things, and then a little biography of each of the um, men that were in that unit. Um, and you, they, one of the resources they used were the um, federal records that we have about soldiers, and those are on microfilm. So we've got a microfilm copy here, but they've kind of compiled that. So those are a good, good resource as well. Um, you know, just going back and using older historical sources that talked about soldiers and individuals. And then, of course, on a more of a global level, we've got adjutant general and um, roster lists and military collections about kind of like the general... Um, nature of the history of the war in North Carolina. Now, do you think a lot of this stuff is indexed and searchable? Um, it depends on what you're looking at. The, say the Civil War records? Um, the roster series is um, searchable, yeah, because they index to, okay. for the unit. So those are, that's a really good, that's where I like to look for people because they've kind of, like I said, done the, a lot of the legwork for right. you. Um, for things like, say, a muster roll, you would want to know the unit, and um, that's how they're identified right. by the company in the unit. Um, those are okay. big. Those are fun. Those are big, big, big <laughs> documents. Do you guys do tours? 
I do do tours. I do most of the tours. It's um, so you can ask that, and usually people will point you my direction. Um, if I'm not available, the reference staff can do that as well. Um, so it's not like you have to be here at 11 a.m. Nope. for the nope, tour. No, it's usually just as the group is coming. As needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, yep. I love it. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of fun. If we know ahead of time that someone's coming, say they say, "Well, I'm coming from." New Hanover County, or I'm interested in this <laughs> county. Sometimes we pull a few highlights from yeah. that county to give you a sense of of what's there. All right, so I know that uh, you can get photocopies mm -hmm. of some of these items for ten cents a copy, mm -hmm. and then I think the microfilm's like twenty five mm -hmm. cents a copy. Um, do you guys have the ability to like let me hand you a jump drive and you can digitize it onto my jump drive for me? No, like we some don't. But, do? but we asking. what we allow people to bring in digital cameras themselves, uh, okay, and you and can take, take photographs. pictures yourself. And that's usually what most patrons do. The only thing we don't allow would be something like a tabletop scanner or something where you're going to put something on top of a document. Uh, but you're yeah, welcome yeah. to use a phone, a camera, a tripod. Um, on the desk, that's perfectly fine. And I have done that many, many times. And by the way, for the folks at home, take pictures of the folder it came in, the box it came in, because it's got all that good information of sourcing. Good advice. Yeah. Then you know where it came from. <laughs> exactly. And I'll tell you what, it helps tell the story. Mm -hmm. I went to the archives and it shows the box and you open the box. You know, I mean, it's, right. it's got all the good Well, stuff, and I think sometimes, know. I've seen this when we've had national conferences in town. People get really excited. They're here for a short time. They take all these pictures um, but it also, like you say, helps keep them in order and you, helps you remember what you were looking at. One of the things that I saw on the website, mm -hmm. which caught my eye, was um, permissions and citations, public domain. Mm -hmm. So tell us about public domain in case people want to use what they find here at the archives in their family history book or they want to put it up on Ancestry or some other place. Is it in public domain? Can we do that? Yeah, a lot of stuff is. And, and the... Part of the point of permissions is to have us just clear that. So if you're going to publish a book or publish a web resource, it's, it's a good idea to check with us. If you have images, particularly if they're photographs um, or from a published resource, that, that we can clear that, that you can do. Anything, you know, if, if we've got something that's open for use mm -hmm. here, you're welcome to use it. Our process is to just say, check, you're clear. And then another part of the permission process is we keep a record of what people ask to publish and, and then we say, you know, put your tagline courtesy of the State Archives. That will help the next researcher when they come by say, oh, that's at the State Archives. So I get that actually a lot, and it's mm -hmm. super fast if someone says, I saw this picture in this book or this website, and it says courtesy of the State Archives, and here's the call number. We can get it to you pretty fast. If someone's coming from wherever, they're mm -hmm. coming to the archives, especially if they've never been here before, and they're going to get that tour. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to give me a tour here soon. I will give you a tour. <laughs> What's the, like, really cool stuff that people would want to see? Like, what should they ask for? Well, people like to see into the stacks. I mean, because, you know, as with most archives, you don't get to go pull your own records like a right, library. Right, And it gives you a sense of, a small taste of how much we have. Because that's just, you're peeking into three floors of, like I said, of a building where I've got four buildings full of records. Right. So that's fun. And then if there's an opportunity, um, I have taken people into our security vault where we have some of our treasures and I can pull out like one or two items of our, of our top like high value, high, and that might be historical value, monetary value, and emotional value to the state. So like I thought maybe we'd look at the Carolina Charter of 1663. That's our oldest document. And it's pretty impressive and pretty beautiful. I so. can't wait. Let's go do it. Okay. Um, the main purpose of our vaults is to sec store security backups of essential records, vital records um, from state agencies and counties. So for example, deed records are backed up um, in our vaults. And that's really more for emergency purposes. So like if a courthouse burned, we could help them reconstruct their records. Right. Um, but this one, we added some space for some of our treasures. Okay. And um, we've got them in here because they need extra security, extra protection. Um, the, this has its own separate fire suppression system, separate air conditioner, um, all that kind of stuff. So little bit extra boost. Um, this is what we call a letter of mark. It's from the Revolutionary War time period. And um, it's basically your permission to be a pirate. Oh, wow. <laughs> so now you can also see everything in here has its own custom box. So these are like Cadillac versions of like these things really need some special. So zoom in there. That's why this is valuable. That's an original John Hancock. He Holy was cow. president of the Continental Congress. 
So he's giving the one granting permission for the privateers. How cool is so, that? So during the Continental Congresses, the delegates from North Carolina had asked John Adams what his opinion was on what would make a good government. And he answered in the form of a letter. And then this later he publishes this, but this is um, the original, what we call thoughts on government. So this is all in John Adams handwriting. And it's very much like just he's writing and thinking. You can see, you know, he might scratch out a word or change his mind on something, but you know, he's got things in here about a single assembly, you know, um, is this kind of stuff doc uh, digitized? Yes, the vault collections are digitized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. But this is really fun because I, I like the idea of like holding something that John Adams actually wrote, actually sat down and wrote. And you know, there's elements in here that make their way into the first Constitution of North Carolina and then the first federal constitution. I mean, the, the federal constitution. So that's kind of fun. North Carolina did not. Um, ratify the Constitution when it was first proposed because there was no Bill of Rights. So the first um, Congress meets without us uh -huh. and without Rhode Island. But once the Bill of Rights came to us, we had a second Constitutional Convention and ratified the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And so then we get this letter. This is all original handwriting. You can, oops, it says to the Governor and Council of State of North Carolina. I'm going to flip it over so you can see who on, so signed it. Oh, wow. It's like a double-sided frame. It's double-sided. Cool it's George Washington, all in his hand. So this is one of our oldest documents, 1663, and it's the charter from the king to the Lord's proprietors to form what is now Carolina, so North and South Carolina. This is the prettiest page. Wow. So this is, I think, one of our most beautiful documents. Okay. So like I said, four pages. Um, it's essentially like a big contract. It's um, letting the Lord's proprietors bring settlers to the colony, set up a government, collect taxes, all those sorts of things. So think about it like a big contract. Um, that's King Charles II. So yeah, it's really impressive artwork of him. And then it goes into great detail and talks about the Lord's proprietors, what they're allowed to do. And we think that he only had one made for all the Lord's proprietors. They shared this one. It's a pretty impressive document. I hope I look that good when I'm this old. <laughs> 1663, so. 1663. We've got a lot of records. So these are county records. And um, what I'll point out as you're walking is you can kind of see some of the same things. So like, you can stop here. The, our counties are arranged alphabetically. And then once you get into that county, we arrange those records in the same way. So once you learn our system, it's the same for every county. I'm just going to... Lots like, and lots of stuff. Look around. <laughs> give people a sense of the behind the scenes, how much is actually here. Here are a few tips about visiting the North Carolina Archives. The Archives is located at 109 East Jones Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. Paid parking is directly across the street. When you enter the building, you will need to sign in and provide identification at the security desk. The State Library is located on the first floor where you'll find printed materials, genealogies, and histories from around the country. The State Archive is located on the second floor. When you first enter, you will need to sign in at the reception window. You may bring in a laptop, a cell phone, pencil, and paper into the research room. Not allowed are pens, carrying bags, and bulky clothing. Lockers are provided for free to lock up your belongings. Both the State Library and the Archives have outlets for your computers and the ability to make copies of documents. In the Archives, the staff will make those copies for you for a small fee. You may take photographs of the documents with your own camera or cell phone. Just a short walk down the street from the State Archives and Library are several museums and lunch locations. Lastly, when visiting the State Archives or Library, be sure to call ahead and check the website for holiday closings and current information. Hey, I've got some links in the description box below this video that have the layout of the research room and of the archives room. There's two different floors, remember? So um, if you want to see those, links are, are in the show notes below. Please subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. And 
If you want to learn a little bit more about North Carolina genealogy, uh, you can go over to ncancestry.com, where is my website, and I've got all kinds of stuff there for you. All right, there are more videos on the screen for you now for your binge watching pleasure. So until next time, see ya. Thank you.